My goodness, would you look at the time. It's 11.15 p.m. Central, 12.15 a.m. Eastern. Live episode of You Gotta Be Shot, Tin Amy. Matt, we, we talked last week that, hey, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be playing this anyways. We usually record Friday nights. Uh, so why not stay up like, I don't know, two hours later than we normally do? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, we're going to fire at this anyway, so, you know. Yeah, we're uh, going to be up. You know, we might as well just put ourselves on camera and, you know, take some take some real-time shame rather than, you know, delaying it till the morning. So Exactly. And I see two actual viewers, so shout out to anybody who actually decided to stay up for this nonsense. Uh, this is kind of... Uh, I don't know. This is kind of just like a little little test run. Uh, Matt Matt hasn't done the live thing yet. Um, I've not. Uh, it's the same as when we normally do it because I do zero editing anyways. So uh, <laughs> you guys will probably not notice a difference in quality, but uh, it, it's better because you know after it usually takes me a week to figure out my sound issues. Now people can tell me real time how shitty I sound or if I'm clicking in the microphone or anything like that. So yeah, hey, you actually sound That's great. Good. You sound yeah, great. Like I figured it out just in time. So. Exactly. I mean, it, it took us a little bit to uh, to get everything going, uh, but uh, hey, we got there eventually. But uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. So you know, we got about well, we got about 40, 40 plus minutes uh, till till uh, first post here. Uh, originally, we were going to be doing um, just trying to do a half hour before, but hey, we got a little bit of time. Once the races start, uh, you know, start rolling around, uh, maybe we'll have a couple more, uh, a couple more people around. But um, yeah, you know, I thought, you know, I haven't had a chance to look at the card yet. I mean, I got time. You know, I got forty-five minutes, which for me is an eternity when it comes to handicapping races. But you know, I, I thought this would be a good time uh, to you know spend a little bit of time. You know, for people who are going to be watching this after the fact. Um, you know, maybe we'll put this up on the, the podcast feed anyways, uh, for people to listen to, um, who, you know, maybe, uh, maybe aren't able to, uh, you know, be degenerates, uh, and get permission from our wives to be up as late as we are. Uh, shout out to my wife who's out of town and, uh, Matt's wife who called him uh, crazy, uh, for, for doing this, but, uh, and has been asleep on the couch for about three hours. So oh, there you go. Love you, honey. <laughs> but uh yeah so i thought it'd be a good time to kind of go through a couple of the the just like the i don't know the i guess resources uh that that we use here um oh look at this charles charles here live from california yeah for him it's nice and it's nice and early you know it's only it's only nine twenty, but uh dinner. yeah exactly uh, but, um, yeah, you know, I actually, I'm sharing the wrong screen. So let me share, I'm going to share my actual, uh, window here. So for those of you who are, are brand new and maybe for those of you who aren't, um, uh, you know, watching this after the fact, like I said, you know, we want to keep some informational content in here. I know we're going to be live capping and live betting this thing, but, uh, you know, Matt, I know you're, you're doing stuff on, on your own. You got your own, um, you got your own stuff. Uh, you're making your own figures. You, you know, you, you got some stuff on the back end, and maybe at some point we can get more into that and talk about how how you scrape that data, where you get that data from, what the, the API and stuff like that that they have. But you know, for people who aren't as um, just absolutely sick in the head like you are, um, we have the the Hong Kong Jockey Club uh, website here, right? HKJC.com, um, and. Uh, there's a couple of things on here. Obviously, you can see uh, you, you got the information. Obviously, you can click on all these links, get more information on the trainer, on the jockey, on the horse, uh, what have you. Um, but I, I think for those of us who are a little bit more, a uh, little bit more geared towards doing stuff, maybe the American way. Um, obviously, you have the uh, the download race form, all races. You, this is the, this is the, where you get the free form um, that uh, you guys see us using all the time uh, when we're handicapping stuff. I just download it and I put it into my PDF editor just because it's easier for me to mark it up and, and do stuff. Uh, this is a clean version. I have not done anything here, but tons of information in here. Um, obviously, uh, you can see 
uh, jockey standings. You can see all kinds of stats. You can see stuff with um, the, the speed maps are in here at the bottom. Um, you, you can see how the uh, trainers are doing. I mean, there's tons and tons of information here. Like, download this, go through it, start reading it, you know, get acquainted with it. Um, uh, but obviously, we'll we'll start with uh, the regular form here. A couple differences. Um, it reads from bottom to top as opposed to top to bottom. So the most recent race, obviously, is at, at the uh, the bottom. And then today's race, uh, all of their information is the one that's got kind of no data on there. Just important to note, uh, it, it, it does help a lot when you're trying to compare distances, compare weights, um, compare jockeys. You know, obviously, here you see uh, Derek Lung uh, is the jockey here. But you can see that... Um, He's been a jockey all those times. Um, they they have a small colony there, so um, it, it's it's pretty easy. You kind of pick up on, on who's who uh, pretty quickly there. But um, another important thing, and something I lean on a little bit more. I like I said, Matt. I know you're using your figures, but uh, they have the Speed Pro website, which for me the the most important part of of this website is going to be you know the speed map. You know, pace makes the race. Uh, speed map always super helpful to see here. Um, you get nice little notes on, on what they think the pace scenario is going to be. And then uh, if you click on it, you get a kind of a nice little recap of the, the, the kind of trip notes of the last time out. Um, you get to see uh, the energy figure that was given to them, um, you know, where they finished, uh, how wide they were. Uh, you get splits in here, so super useful. You you can really really dive in and, and just you know get a lot of information um, pretty quickly, um, and more detailed uh, than I think you might come f uh, you might see in American racing. D depending on what form you're using, right? Like if you're if you're super casual, you're the guy who goes and buys like the basic program at the track that doesn't even have speed figures on it, like. This is this is way more information you get. I mean, if you're someone using Formulator and using uh, maybe Timeform, uh, pretty pretty equivalent information, you, except with with the figures, I think. Um, but uh, you know, you get you get kind of a little breakdown here of the energy figures from uh, the past couple races. You get some stuff here with. Um, I don't know. It's good to see the progression. The last couple of runs of the horse uh, matches up the last couple that are in the the PPs. Um, and like I said, if you click if you click on the the speed map, you get a little bit more information. Um, super high level. Obviously, like I, I think the best way to to learn this stuff and to get familiar with it is to go ahead and and just go on the website and and just click around. Um, you, you'll be able to find your replays. You'll be able to find, you know, start taking your own notes if, if that's the type of handicapper you are. Um, and, and you can really, really dig in to it. Like, it, it's really nice. I think, Matt, you were talking a little bit. I don't remember if it was just us talking off stream or if we talked about it on the last episode. But, I mean, the fact that there's two tracks and you see the same horses a lot. You see the same trainers, the same jockeys. You can really, really start to get to know the horses, the jockeys, the intent, um, and, and, and the track, you know, and, and some of the ins and outs. Um, and, um, I don't, and they run for a very long time. I mean, they run, what, uh, September to, like, June or something yeah, like June. that? Yeah, they take a couple months off in the summer, yeah. and then they come come right back, so... Yeah, and I mean it's it's good and bad, right? Uh, you can definitely remember all the bad trips you get. You can remember horses that you liked, you know, at, at any given week, right? And and they run a ton here, right? I mean, you'll see horses run back after a week and and you know, kind of back to back, or sometimes you'll see horses take months off too. Um, and you know, it's it's a much smaller colony, right? And there's differences in in that, right? There's like one mare running in the entire colony. It's all male horses. Things like that are weird, but. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's good, right? It's, it's kind of like taking everything that you would take from American racing, which we're used to and really encapsulating it down just into two tracks, right? And it, it makes things like, you know, I think I told you, I mean, it, you probably play up what I do a little too much, right? Like I'm not taking anything that's not on the website and just trying to do a little bit of massaging over it. I'm taking those splits that you see directly in that form 
um, and I'm trying to come up with part times and make my own figs. I'm not modeling off of that or anything like that, right? I'm not algorithmically betting or doing anything like that. I am not smart enough to do that, right? I mean, I'm going to take another sip of my beer. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, right. Yet. I'm sure. I, I'm sure I'll get there at some point, but. You know, I mean, to me, I, I still like the traditional handicapping, and so I'm using information to augment that. Um, same with this, right? I mean, you have the speed map up here. I use that, right? I don't try and recreate that. I don't try and reinvent the wheel. At first, I started to try and do that, and quickly I realized, like, this thing is infinitely better than anything I'm going to come up with. So why am I trying to go off and recreate my own speed? You know, like you said, the only time where that thing's going to be wrong is if there's trainer intent, right? Like, if a trainer says... Hey, I've been rating this horse and it's looked like crap and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to send it right now. You know, there's, that's not going to show up on a form because it hasn't tried to do that. But, you know, again, the nice thing is here you can find it. And if you want to click back into some of the, you know, individual horse stuff, like you'll see that, right? They have to say that coming in. It's, it's a weird, it's a weird colony, but it, it makes you, you know, it makes you miss those things when you get back to domestic racing and everything just seems like, okay, well, we don't know what's going to happen. Right, you just chalk it up to the wind. Here, you know, anything that's out there, if a horse, you know, leaves its stall, you can find it on that website. Honest to God, it's out there. So it's it's refreshing. It's much different, though. <laughs> so. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, like like you were kind of saying, um, you know, with with regards to trainer intent and stuff like that. Um, there, there's tons of interviews. Um, you can watch, they have, you know, a, a pregame program that you can watch. Uh, they, they post it on the site as well and they interview the jockeys and like the jockeys will tell you, yeah, this is the plan. And what happens is when they say that's the plan and they don't follow the plan, they get asked questions and there is a report that comes out. Hey, why did you not do this? Right. And usually what ends up happening is like the jock will be like, Hey, I got shuffled back. And then I kind of felt the horse didn't feel right, so I kind of wrapped up. Like, they were very, um, very intent. I mean, uh, Joe Morera, who's uh, one of the best jockeys in the world, uh, didn't, like, finish uh, finish a ride to, like, the 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 wire. And would they suspend them for two weeks, three weeks, something like something that? Like or that. a month? Yeah. Like, and, it was it was crazy. You've seen it a lot, right? And, and I mean, rides that... Honestly, for me, if you were to watch them, like, I can't even tell they're not riding it out, right? Like, it, maybe they stand up a little like that, but, God, I mean, it, it's stuff that you see every day in, in American racing, and they're suspending people for that just once uh, in, uh, in Hong Kong. It's it's wild, right? And, I mean, even then, if they do stuff different than intent, they can suspend them, too. It's, uh, it's a much different world over there, for sure. Yeah, we have a fellow insomniac, uh, Colin, out there. Uh, obviously, you can check his stuff out on the Trust the Profits uh, network, and he does a lot of stuff out there. So what's up, Colin? Appreciate you checking in. Uh, Charles uh, did mention earlier, and we kind of skipped over this, his wife gets mad when he plays Aussie in Hong Kong because it gets late. Um, I, I think I told this story last week, but uh, you know, for, on New Year's, uh, my wife and I were, were up firing at Hong Kong till like 3 a.m. Like she was, I forgot what she was watching. She was watching a movie. Uh, but like she was watching like a three hour movie and she started at like 1130, like, because she's just a degenerate, just like I am. And like, she's like, wait, because like she saw me playing. She's like, oh, I want to bet on, I mean, she calls them the Chinese ponies, which I think might get us canceled by Hong Kong. But, um, she's like, I, like, I want to bet. And, and like, now it's like her mission because like, she hasn't cashed a ticket in the cu last couple months that we've been playing. Uh, just like she'll like play like one or two races, uh, so now she's always like, she's like, are you? She's like, when are you playing again? Like, I need, I need, I need to to win a race here. Like, this is crazy. Like, she just keeps. It's funny. She keeps on just giving me money, like to, to bet for her. She's like, come on, bet this horse. Um, but funny. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, Colin's playing playing a little bit of Rocket League. Uh, that's, that's a horse racing. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a callback, dude. Like I haven't I haven't had a good Rocket League session in in, in a while, um, but oh man, um, I, so my wife, she, I don't know, she she was never a gambler before she met me, uh, but you know when we go to Vegas, she'll you know she'll bring a couple hundred bucks to, to bet on slots and. 
you know, will uh, so so she'll she'll play a little bit, but you know, like what it usually ends up happening is she'll put 20, 20 bucks into a machine, lose it, put twenty bucks in another machine, lose it, and then realize like I could have spent that forty dollars at Lush. I'm gonna go to Lush instead, and then she'll go to the store, you know, buy a bunch of bath bombs, go get a massage, go back to the room, and realize like, hey, like the money I brought gambling, I I'd like to spend it that way better, but. There, she is a very big fan of um, holiday movies, like Hallmark Christmas movies. And there's this one terrible, terrible movie with the chick from Full House. Was it Candace Cameron? And she, like, flies on a plane with this vision board, right? And is like inconveniencing everybody on the plane because she's got to fly with the stupid vision board for her wedding, right? Like, just some stupid, like, premise. And, like, I'm like, I can't believe that you watch this. Well, sure enough, there's a horse named Vision Board uh, that was running, I think is running at, I forgot if it was Belmont or Aqueduct. And uh, so I tell my wife, hey, this the horse Vision Board's running today. And she's like, oh, I'm going to bet it to win. And my wife normally, she's like, put $5 to win on it, right? And she'll hand me a five or something, right? I don't know what got into her, but she's like, 50 to win. I was like, are you sure? She's like, is that crazy? I was like, I mean, not to say I've never bet 50 to win, but like, I, are you sure that's how much you want to bet? She's that's like, a- yeah. That's a high confidence play, right? And, and so, for the amount we're betting. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right. And I'd like to know, I had liked a different horse in that race, right? I just told her vision board because of the name. But then I start I start sweating. Cause I'm like, what if this horse fucking wins? And my wife's got fifty to win on it. So I do like a I don't know, like a ten dollar exact a box or something. With the horse I like and, and vision board. And I think the horse went off at like four to one, nine to two, somewhere around that. And the horse wins. And my wife's like, oh, how much did I win? Like 50, no, it's like a hundred bucks. I was like, no, no, you did not win. <laughs> you won much more than that. And I, I hit the exacta for $10 and I think it paid, uh, it paid like 400 bucks or something. And I'm like, I'm like, this is just, I, I can't believe uh, like, you know, about ten dollars to win on a horse I actually thought was going to win, and a horse that my wife had a name hunch on. But you know, my, my favorite part of that story is not that you were rooting for her to win and say, "Oh man, if she loses, we're going to be out fifty dollars." My favorite part is that your initial reaction was, "If she hits this bet, I'm never going to hear the end of it, and I hope she loses." <laughs> Dude, <laughs> which summarizes my whole my whole time in Saratoga this year of my family asking me, "Don't you do this often? How come you're not hitting any winners?" <laughs> Dude, it's... I'm betting jockeys and colors. <laughs> yeah, look at Russ. Russ, he pinged me the other day. There was a horse named Sha Tin. Yeah, that it won. Was, I thought it was being Cohen's horse, but I think somebody claimed it. And once you know, once Big Keith Athenson got off that horse, it uh, surprise, surprise, it started running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but yes, yeah, and Keith, Char- Keith was in for his girlfriend, I believe, to ride that horse before it got claimed. So, God, <laughs> anyway. uh, Charles says that maybe she bought some expensive ass bath bombs at Lush. Uh, dude, it's funny because like there are like certain things now that like my wife and I like. There's like we have an understanding, and like there's just like certain things like we don't like ask. Like if I have a bad day at the track or if I whatever, she doesn't ask how much did you lose today. Right, we just don't talk about it. And when these extraneous, uh, random things show up, whether they're Amazon packages, Sephora, uh, random little capsules that show up at our house that I have no idea what what she stores in them, like we're just like, I'm not gonna ask how much you spent on what looks to be like a cheap piece of plastic. Like we're just not gonna talk about it. So, um, but uh, I, I did laugh because I, I forgot who it was. Uh, maybe it was Alex had mentioned like to somebody for like, hey, just buy Lush. And then I had a show like the corner of our house that is just Lush and this other company, Nectar, just like bath products. It's, it's insane. But um, 
Yeah, right. Like it, it's not it's not about her being right. It's about you know making sure I didn't look wrong. Uh, my wife also Derby Day had mage, um, and she had uh, no balls. So uh, she came out a okay uh, last Derby. Uh, I think she ended up up like. $300, and I think she might have only been in like 20 bucks, 25 bucks or something. It was nuts. But um, hey, let's let's see if we can make some money. Let's see if we can make some money tonight, right, uh, Matt? And uh, we can tell our wives how well we did in, instead of how much time we wasted here. But uh, we're going to be starting here with a 1,200-meter race, bottom of the class, class five, all-weather track. Yeah, Charles asking for her picks. I should probably – I'll text her. Um and uh, yeah, so this is about as low as it gets at uh, at Shotton. So this will be a interesting uh, interesting race. Uh, you do have the one um, uh, Spangle Fortune here, who you know just was I guess kind of out of his depth the last couple of races, and then they finally they finally put him on the all weather uh, for the second time, and uh, I, I guess he liked it. He won at, at fourteen to one at a decent price. Um, and uh, he is still your high weight in here, uh, picking up another five pounds. But I don't know, Matt. Where, where did you kind of land here? I, I know you uh, you kind of put your uh, you kind of put your packs uh, or uh, your picks out there already. So yeah, and and there's two horses I like, right? I mean, when I put picks on Twitter, I, I try and pick you know kind of I'll call it best value, right? But there's a lot you know more behind it that I'll end up playing. Two horses I guess stood out. Um, one who I, I thought probably would go off maybe at a short price was the four valiant elegance um that the race what three back in january on the all weather so like the last all weather race it ran it was running up in class four obviously that's coming from a very poor draw right it was drawn it was drawn in the widest post they only run 12 on the dirt here so you know it's sitting wide that's at 121 pounds um had the lead faded off i think the the dirt plays weird here, and there's never a lot, of, a lot of dirt races, so I don't pay too much attention to how the track was playing, but I think speed wasn't really holding on the dirt. So, you know, a, a lot of things against it, right? It's up in class four. It's, you know, it's carrying weight. It's on a lead on a slow favoring track. It's drawn wide. All of that gets fixed now. And if you look at it, right, um, it's got the bug up. So really it's running at not 132. It's running at 122. It's basically running at the same weight it was in class four, in class five that's a full class drop within three races i think this horse will probably be super short because of that but i do think right if the dirt's playing you know fair to forward this horse should probably have the run of it um and that's probably the most logical selection here i would go towards um that said looking for a little bit more of a price here actually i i forget we're actually playing this now so i can bring up what the odds are and as I look at it, it's nine to one. So I would put a lot of money through that right now, personally. I think that that horse is primed to win because, you know, look, it didn't run bad a full class up at the same weight. How do I expect it to run bad now? Um, yeah. The horse I ended up posting on Twitter, though, was a seven. Um, it, Casa Legend, and this is a horse that hasn't run on all weather before. The all weather here is weird. I mean, you know, I've said it before, and especially down in class five, no one's bred for the all weather, right? Like, there's nothing coming in in class five that you think is going to be a dirt horse. They're kind of desperation moves. Um, that's so they're the Bafferts. They're, they're, yeah. they're the counter it's, Baffert. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's, you know, Bob, Bob would probably clean up over here for, <laughs> well, actually, no, he probably wouldn't for a lot of reasons, <laughs> but I won't get us demonetized. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I think one thing that I do like doing is I don't pay too much attention to trials unless there are cases like this where a horse hasn't run on a surface before and I'm trying to figure out, okay, is it going to take to it, right? And if you look, if you pull up some of the, the trial data for this, um, I don't know if your forms actually show trial data, but um, if you were to have it, I think the all-weather trials that it's run, um, it made up good ground finishing fifth. The one before that, it made up a lot of ground finishing second. Um, the one before that, same, it, it started eighth, made up a lot of ground finishing second. So if it's not playing forward, right, if there's speed up front, if that four gets burnt out maybe by, um, you know, the nine or somebody else running up front, like if the pace falls apart, I think the sevens are likely closer. Um, and I think, you know, probably has a pretty good run of it too. So I like some uh, some really nice prices here. I, I think both the four and the seven to me were, were pretty strong plays, as strong as you can get from me on the dirt, which I, I don't really love usually. But... Um, yeah, those are kind of the two places that I went. Um, 
in this in this first race for those reasons, right? I I don't know if it plays the same way as turf here, right? I usually try to say, okay, draw, wait, et cetera. I think that matters less on the dirt, but it still matters, right? And so, you know, that's kind of where I'll end up going. I'll probably play some exactos with some horses underneath there too, just anyone who's shown any sort of dirt form at all. Um, you know, the 8 to 9, the 11, maybe all make sense, but uh, 7 and 4 are kind of where I, I ended up going because of that. And I know, Josh, you you love the dirt here. It's your favorite surface to cap. So <laughs> how, how you'd be looking at this and where you'd want to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of agree with you, right? You get a lot of – you. Get, I mean, you get some pedigree that can run on anything, right? Like, you get a lot of more than readies, right? Yeah. I mean, more than ready can run on both surfaces, you know? So so you, you get some pedigree like that, and, and you feel like you can play um, – you know, you can play – it uh you know on the all weather as well um but let me pull up my pps i don't know i i was kind of looking at this this race and um you know i i didn't really have stuff as prepared as you did but um you know I, i'm kind of interested to see what kind of price we're going to get on this uh this one horse um you know he he didn't really get bet last time out and like I know he's he's getting a little bit more weight here, but now he's he's drawn even better than he was last time. He's drawn on the five post, um, and I don't know. I kind of see him kind of getting a similar trip as he did last time out. Um, it looks like your your leader is probably going to be the nine eight trigram tri uh, eight trigrams. Um, his stable mate in this race is where is he? The uh, three happy tango, who's also shown some speed, um, and so I don't know. I I don't really see. You know, I, I don't think that they're gonna kind of duel each other. Um, eight trigrams is drawn inside, is in the two post. So they both got good. They got both got good posts. They both got uh, speed, but I I don't really I don't really see a huge. Uh, huge like speed duel I think like coming out of this so I don't know maybe the one just kind of sits that same pocket trip that he did last time I mean now he's in the five post I mean he can sit just off those two and, and kind of press and uh, you know that was a uh, you know speed pro really liked that last race um, if we look at the speed pro figure uh, they gave that one a 91 um, and that's the fastest anyone's running on at this trip um, most of these horses, like I said, have been running uh, turf mostly. Um, the four that you had mentioned before does have a figure back going uh, going five furlongs on the turf um, that that fits here. But I don't know. Maybe the one is just a different horse uh, on the all weather. So um, I don't. know. That's kind of where I'm looking right now. Um, as you kind of see, I. I don't know if Naira Betts, like I, what's going on, but Naira Betts isn't updating. Uh, so they I don't, haven't. I'm not. Yeah. They, they've been showing like 99 to one until post goes off. So um, I've been using like AM wager and express bet both have it. I'm, I'm looking at the board on AM wager right now. Um, gotcha. Shout out AM wager. Um, yeah. Another thing is... you can do. Uh, another thing you can do actually is uh, the website's got it as well, but go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say the one is currently your second choice, but it's at six to one. Your favorite's yeah. currently sitting at five to one, meaning the public has absolutely no idea on this stuff. And I do find that, right? I think if you have, it's funny because, right, like, you know, obviously people come here because it's turf racing and that's what the bread and butter is of this. But I feel like because of that, dirt racing just gets wild, right? Like you can get prices for days on this because I feel like a lot of the, you know, I'll call it data-driven handicappers and syndicates and all that. They will focus on the turf and they don't care about a class five dirt race, right? They're not going to have an opinion on it and they're just going to kind of punt it because there's not enough data to, to form that. So if you can have opinions on those races, you can, you could find some pretty good prices. I think there's a horse running in one of the later races last, you know, last week that, you know, got up for pretty close second at 33 to one, which to me was logical just because again, you're, you're looking at trials, you're looking at things that, aren't showing up on paper um, and you're able to kind of get those edges. I feel like once you get into the more experienced horses, that's where the handicapping gets, um, you know, a little more savvy, right? You're going to get boards that are probably reflecting true odds, you know, versus something like this where, you know, it's obviously about as flat as you're going to see a race ever. Yeah. 
No, for sure. And like the takeout, I mean, it's not great, but it's ba- it's pretty normal. I think. I think it's like what is it, eighteen percent win place show, and it's like twenty two yeah, or something for Quinones. the tries get kind of kind of bad. Um, the tries get bad everywhere. Place, but yeah, I know. So that's why I'm like, oh, twenty four percent. But that's that's about the going rate. So yeah, it's not out. It's not out any worse or better than any other track domestically. I'll call it. But. Yeah, I'm seeing yeah seven or seven point one. So it's it's six to one. Um, we're paying for this one. Uh, yeah, the the favorite is currently five to one. Uh, and it's a ten horse. Did we look at this ten horse at all? Let's open this ten. Uh, the 10's got some good good dirt form, and it looks like they they tried stretching them out last time with Zach aboard, uh, and uh, that didn't work. So maybe they're, they're thinking of cutting them back to the the six furlongs. Uh, been dropping in weight a little bit. Yeah, that race two back isn't isn't bad. It definitely it definitely fits if you're you know factoring in you know fair track and who was riding that day, but. I don't know. To me, you draw it way out. You're get you're taking the favorite on a horse that, you know, is over five, has never won running on on the course, over sixteen overall. I mean, not that that's you know, it's five to one. It's not like you're taking, you know, even money on that favorite. But yeah. I went elsewhere. So. Yeah, the like I said, the the one coming in with the the recent form seems to make a, a bit of sense for me. Um, I mean, you know, I love speed, but like, there's there's going to be some shenanigans here. I think with the nine and the three, um, for all intents and purposes, you think the nine's going to get the lead and, and pretty easily. But uh, who's who's the jock on the nine? Who we got here? We got the bug, five pound bug aboard. Hmm. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with the one here. I'm going to get a little wind bet here on this one before I get too ahead of myself. And I think maybe I'll do a little Quinella. A couple bucks. One with the three nine. So completely uh, going against your you know, your horses. So I'm sure what's going to end up happening is uh, we'll, we'll get the old splits act out here. There you go. Colin's got four dollars in, in his account, so Colin's got a couple of ways he can go. We gave you half the race. So yeah, we did give one. you half the race, pick, but I'm... pick one of the other half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Colin's talking about Mister Automatic Day. Uh, we were we were on a live stream once with I was on. Um, it might yeah, I think it was Derby Day. It was either Derby Day or maybe it was uh, Oaks Day, but. Um, this guy came in and was just like berating us on on chat. I don't know. And his name was Mr. Automatic. And I want to say we probably spent the next hour just digging into Mr. Automatic the entire time. Like, uh, I don't know. It was, I I mean, bartender Josh made an early appearance that day and, <laughs> uh, and maybe got, uh, got a little, a little sauced up. Uh, a little early. Uh, I mean, it's Derby Day. You know. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Yeah, hit the bench tulips. You know. <laughs> oh God, who knows what's gonna happen this year, man? This is gonna. It's gonna be a shit show. I'm gonna be being in Louisville. Um. Oh man, I I'm excited. I you said you were going. You were going down for Derby, right? And, yeah. And whatnot, potentially. And yeah, so. Yeah, it should be. Uh, it should be a good time. Um. Let me pull up the uh, feed here on my end. They're still walking in the paddock. Um, why don't we uh, Why don't we go ahead and take a look ahead uh, towards race two here? Um, so I, I'm going. Well, I'm going with the one here, uh, Spangled Fortune. Uh, I got a one with three nine Quinella. Matt, what what do you got going here? You, you got just a win yeah, bet I, here. I win bet the seven. Uh, pretty good. I got. Um... A rather sizable win bet on the seven, and a you know smaller place bet on that. I got a, I got an exact of the the four seven with the eight nine and eleven underneath, um, and then I got a double coming out of it to this race that we'll we'll talk about here. Oh yeah, um, to the to the six and the ten. But we'll uh, you know I, I know I said before I don't play doubles, and then 
Yeah, right here, I'm telling you, I'm playing a double. But <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, I was um, in in the Discord. Someone had mentioned, "Hey, you know, I'm uh, like I got paid. I got paid for second place in the double." And I was like, I know they do that for 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 pick threes, but the double is kind of a new thing that they that they finally allowed us to the pool to jump into. That's in the waters. Um, yeah, yeah. So I know, uh, yeah, um, their pick three and their double uh, pays a consolation if you run second in the payoff leg. Um, so uh, and and, I, and the pick three sometimes it actually pays pays a okay. Um, I, I don't know what the the split up of the pool is there, but. Um, you you said you're doubling to the the six and the ten here. We're, we got another dirt race. Uh, we're gonna be going six furlongs here. Uh, so you you like speedy smarty, the six and the ten, uh, ACA power or ACA power or whatever they're gonna call it. Maybe we don't say ACA. Power. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's not say ACA. You know, working uh, working uh, for uh, government healthcare. Yeah, I don't, um, ACA is like a it's like a well, it's a it's like a four letter word even though it's, it's only three letters, but. Um, yeah, talk to me. Talk to me about your horses in this spot in this race. Yeah, I guess uh, I'll start with the six, right? I mean, I think the six has obviously run four straight dirt races here. Um, I think arguably it's it's been improving. If you toss that last one, you know, it was it was running three wide the whole way, um, and I think the notes even say like it was a tough run, right? Like it, if you watch the replay, it tries to it tries to get up on the speed, and um, I don't know, Zach Zach on dirt is probably where you, if you're going to fade him, you can fade him there. Um, he was just caught wide the whole way, and, and you know, the horse kind of fades out the back. And so that fig itself probably doesn't look too good. But, you know, otherwise it's a it's a four-year-old horse, right? And so you expect those numbers to kind of keep moving forward. Um, stays at the same weight. You know, I think just fig-wise through my stuff looks, looks well-meant and looks, you know, like it could win this. So I feel like that's definitely a play. Um and then the 10, you know, again, one of those things where I'm coming back to the draw, right? It's it's the horse that closed in well last time from a wide draw with the, you know, obviously with the buck up. So it's going to pick up some weight from where it was running last time. Um, but to me, hey, if you can close into a slow pace um, from a very wide draw and now you get a better draw and, you know, you got the best draw. You went from the worst draw to the best rail draw now. Um, that's only going to benefit you if you're staying at a, at a similar weight at a similar level. So that's kind of where I went. Um, I, the horse I talked about a few minutes ago that, you know, hit the board at a really big price last time is actually the nine in this race, Hinokami Kagura. Um, I'm going elsewhere with that. I think that's, you know, something where if you find a horse at 40 to one and you hit on that, going back to the well probably isn't the best idea because I think <laughs> that horse is going to be short now. And, you know, again, it, it was 33 to one for a reason, probably that like, you know, you're expecting lightning to strike twice with that. And that's just not what I typically go for. So uh, I'm just going to be the six and the 10 in that race and kind of double out of the four and the seven into it. So. Yeah. It looks like your, uh, your speed's drawn out pretty wide in this race. Um, So that yeah, makes who knows for... how it's going to play out. I don't know. I was looking at the – I was tilting my head sideways trying to figure out what the pace looks like in that, and I don't know. And you never know how it's going to play. I mean, again, it's one of those things where they don't run enough dirt races to, to really let you know how the track's going to be. So sometimes sometimes I play it like synthetic. It's like, you know, just take the horse on the lead and the horse, you know, furthest back and throw all the horses out in the middle and see what happens. So. <laughs> I thought I thought you just take the low weight, a, lot, a, lot, a, hard, a big price. That's what I do here. Yeah, low weight, best draw, highest price. Just bet those if you're confused. So, uh, I kind of, uh, I'm like I said, I'm looking at this from a pace perspective, right? I'm trying to see who who I think is is drawn decently. Um, And who who's got kind of like that that pressing I think run style I think that's that's what you're gonna want here as I mumble uh, out of the microphone here. Oh, here we go. Here's a question: Better late night snack, pop tart or fruit roll up? Both of those would kill me. <laughs> I mean, they, they wouldn't, but. 
I gotta say, I, you gotta go with uh, complex carbs, right? And nothing goes better with alcohol than uh, than some uh, some starch in there. And I, I think Pop Tart probably has some fat mixed in with the sugar, so we'll, we'll go with that. I need something to soak up the alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I had uh, I really wanted Mexican food today, so um, and it's tough, right? Because there's a Mexican place that's like just far enough that it's inconvenient to get to, but it's close enough that Uber Eats doesn't charge an arm and a leg to deliver. So uh, I had a 40% off coupon as well, which always makes it much, much easier. Um, but I had to get to $25, right? So I got a burrito, which the, apparently the going rate for a burrito is like 12 bucks now. Because uh, I was going to get a burrito and order fries, right, and kind of split it up. But then I needed like nine dollars so i also got three tacos um so i had a uh i had a taco uh i had one for dinner and then i had like a couple bites out of my burrito so i got a burrito for lunch tomorrow and i had a taco before we got, came on on here because uh i'm on my third beer for the night and obviously like you said you need you need some fat to yeah, kind of catch all that up. right what kind of meat do you think was on the tacos I ordered? Are we talking authentic Mexican place or are we talking like Tex Mex? Yes, like, yes, authentic. Uh, what do I hope you ordered or what do I hope? Like, <laughs> my favorite my favorite kind of taco. It's uh, I will I will say my favorite taco in hopes that we synergize and, and get to this. I love uh, lengua. Uh, I like tongue. This tongue is why is, we get together. This is why we see, get along yes, so I well. Knew, this is, is why we get along we so well. We did not talk about this. Lengua is my my favorite. <laughs> it oh is so my good. god! Yeah, that's it's 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 what I order, dude. I order I order lengua tacos. That's yeah, yes. man. And it's funny because because I um I try to explain it to people. I'm like, look, like. If you're if you're a texture person, like I, I can't help you. But if you're not a texture person, you don't care. If you like the texture of stuff like mushrooms, it just tastes like beefier beef. Like I, it's it's hard to explain, but it just it's so good. And when they when it's done right, it's super tender. You know, it it does have a little bit of chew to it, like uh, as they're loading into the gate here, um, kind of like like I said, like a, like a mushroom or something like that, but. I don't know, man. I just for my my go. Uh, I I do see uh, El Pastor in there. That's uh, my second favorite uh, thing to get. Always love a good El Pastor taco. Um, funny story about El Pastor is uh, uh, basically came about because of a huge influx of Lebanese uh, immigrants to uh, to Mexico. They brought the spit, which is how El Pastor tacos get made. They all, there's also a thing called tacos arabes, which are basically Arab tacos, which are uh, it's like basically shawarma uh, served on a tortilla that's thick and looks and is basically pita bread. So there's a there's your your cultural uh, moment uh, for for the stream here as uh, they're they're circling here. I thought they were loading in quicker than they get them in here, man. They get they, them in I mean, fast. They have like 80 guys in the gate crew, right? Like yeah. if a horse isn't going in, I swear they have 10 guys just pick up the horse and put them in the gate. <laughs> yeah. So. I always love uh, Japan racing. You ever watch Japan where the guy gets up on like the, the stand and they play like the real intense trumpet music and he's just like yeah, giving the first down. With... Yeah, he's giving like the first down signal. Yeah. Yeah. They, right. Yeah. They, it's... It, this is somewhere in between uh, that and the, you know, the Sam Houston guy that's standing out in the middle of the track going to get run over with a, a you know. The oh, gate. the cowboy dude, the guy like he's <laughs> he like just, a, he's like a rodeo he's, clown out there, dude. He's like, loading him in the gate and he's standing like in front of gate one, just being like, ah. <laughs> yeah, I but I just love like I don't know like he like really like gets into it like he yeah. like yeah, like he he, it's like it's like he wants to show people how dangerous it is because he's like real dramatic. He like backs out of the way and stuff like. All right, they're they're loaded in here. Let's see what we got. I got. I don't even remember what post my uh, my one is in here. It's the five, right? Yeah. yeah, post five. Post five. Let's see how he breaks here. 
Okay, good. Looks like look nine's off to an easy lead. So, yeah, and the three is just gonna chill right off off of him. Interesting. This four is uh, is hustling up a little bit. Yep, running running eight wide the entire way. That's good. Yeah, but hey, that's why you bet the seven, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. All right. Well, I think this is the trip I wanted for my one. So uh, we'll see here. Looks like our uh, looks like the what is it? The nine, four out there on the lead. Three and and one. Get the seven to get off. Get an angle. Get the seven to get up. He's not going anywhere. Oh, they're flattening out. Oh, the five's making up some ground. There's four to go. Drift. Drift. Oh, the four's gone. Drift. No, the four's not gone. Get up. Go oh, up. Ye oh. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't think. I. Th it's either I think four you or ten. That ten. Did you have the I ten underneath? That, no, I tossed uh -oh. that ten entirely. I think mm. it's a ten. That's ten four. It's all right. I love this angle that comes right here. The slow mo, like right the away fact with that they the show line. it immediately. That's ten. Oh man, that is close. I marked it too. I I, I said the horse was gone. I won't forget. So I know Mark's at an NHC this year. Last year, we were at uh, we were at the same table for. Uh, the last chance, first chance. And like three of us are on the same horse at Oak Lawn. And I mean, you, if I know you love yourself some real, real shitty racing. So I know you love yourself some Oak Lawn Park. Um, but have, I've never hit a bet there. So, <laughs> but dude, this horse was gone. I mean, we're talking eight nine lengths ahead at the top of the stretch and he's not slowing down and mark gets up and what does he do he starts fist bumping people at the table because everyone's got it basically he's fist bumping and we're at the top of the stretch oh oh i got that oh Four. you did get there wow that is not what i thought happened there I know they were showing the ten. They showed the ten. They're never wrong with that. Okay. Yeah. Well, look at that. But he, dude, he is fist bumping, and I'm like, the race isn't over yet. And what happens? Gets run down. Horse like shortens up, so crazy. And the, the another like two other horses make up like eight lengths in like five strides. Dude, it was crazy. But there was another time. The first time I went to Saratoga. Um, I had a, it was either pick three or pick four going and he called the photo. It's like, absolutely. He's like, absolutely. You got the photo. Wow. That is so speaking, close. Speaking of calling photos. Speaking of calling the photos. Yeah. Yeah. I did not get the photo. So, um, so the next time I was at, uh, Saratoga, I am on the rail with Capone and Ed. And uh, I think Caleb's with us too. And I have a pick six. It was a pick six carryover and I'm live. And I'm single to like, I'm single to like a six to five horse in like a six horse field. Uh, he was a speed horse. And he gets out to the lead and same thing, dude. He's up by like four or five lengths at the top of the stretch. Capone comes over, dude. He's ready. To, he starts fist bumping me. I'm like, dude, you can't be doing this to me right now, dude. I need, I need this. I need. It. And the horse wins by open lengths. And uh, but he's like, dude. He was like, it was never in doubt. And I was just like, no, dude. I've been, I've been hurt before. I've been hurt. I've been hurt, I've been hurt before by that move. So, but um. That was actually that was actually a really nice start to the trip. I think I hit it for like eighteen, nineteen hundred bucks, uh, and that was the first day I was there. 
So uh, free weekend, you know. Basically, I mean, I think, and I, like honestly, dude, like I was feeling, I was feeling real, uh, I was feeling real generous that weekend because I think I, I picked up the picked up the dinner tab. We went out to the local, uh, and I picked up the dinner tab there. Never mind, and, not uh, a free weekend. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, if you've been to the local, it, it's it's one of the the more. Um, I mean, yeah, it's reasonable. not like yeah, it's not on like nothing's the, the main drag. but of them, yeah. Yeah, it's like you know, I I think our our bar our tab was like two hundred bucks for like eight or ten of us. Like you know, it was it was it wasn't bad, but um, yeah, I've been chasing that. I've been chasing that on track high since. That's I think the biggest hit I've hit on track. Um, I always laugh because when I was at uh, Keeneland with Caleb, uh, I I hit a uh, turf pick three. It was the lowest paying turf pick three of the entire meet. Paid like seventy four dollars, <laughs> and I'm just like, you, you gotta be kidding me! And it's funny because I think what knocked me out, something knocked me out of like the early pick five that paid like twenty six hundred and three k three grand something like that, uh, and uh, it was a gun runner first time starter. And at that point, Caleb and Caleb's dad were betting basically every single gun runner first time starter. So it's like, you know, these fools over here like are are banging the drum on this horse, and I just didn't listen. And I think uh, I think Caleb's dad ended up hitting it, and it should have been both of us. But um, but it was funny because that actually started uh, uh, that started uh, Caleb's dad always hits a big uh, big ticket whenever I, I'm on a trip with him. So. <laughs> At it's like Sar- paying for your flights. He's flying. yeah. At Saratoga, yeah, hotel room. There you go. <laughs> at Saratoga, he hit something at Del Mar for like fifty eight hundred or something, which is really nice. But um, but yeah. All right. Well, you're live. I am live. You're live Somehow. and you're double. Somehow. I'm I'm dead as a doornail uh, after that first race, but um, it's all good. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and take a look here at race two again. Um, I'm actually curious what yeah, they all got out they all got out well. I guess. Yeah, I don't know what the plan was. I mean I, I mean you, the, you knew the you knew that the three like that, you know? Like, yeah, you knew the three wasn't gonna go with uh with the nine, but I don't know, man. I think I think if the three didn't wasn't so passive, maybe he he gets the jump. But I don't know. I'm not a jockey. I'm much too large. I'm, you know, I'm I'm even taller than Deshaun. Uh, was it uh, Deshaun Parker, right? And he's like six foot or something. Yeah. Um. God bless him. <laughs> All right. So you got you got uh, six ten here. Six ten. Yep. Speedy smarty yeah, Which. Yeah, I was I was looking at um, I was looking at the Speed Pro here. Trying to make some sense here. They got the three and the twelve on the lead, and the three is in the eleven post. Twelve is in the twelve post. So, but you saw there. I mean, like the the track, the dirt track is pretty. Uh, it's pretty deep. So I feel like you you get closers to get there. You know, like it's not just um, it's not just speed all the time. Uh, like. Uh, <laughs> like American dirt racing. So, huh. And the nine you said was the short price last time out that ran a huge, or the long price no, last it, time out. It was out a long that... price last time out. And I'm I'm curious what price you end up getting on that horse now. But it was it was 33 to one and it closed off pretty well. 66 so, to one. Yeah. Was, sorry. Even, yeah. So, but yeah, I, I had a decent place bet on that. Um, but I don't know what price you get now. So, yeah, and I mean, I think it, it, you know, fast buck won that, but I think it fast buck won by a couple lengths, if I remember right. Half or, length, it looks like. Was it? Yeah, uh, I think fast buck was like basically pulled up at that point. Not pulled mm-hmm. up, but I mean, they ride them all out, but yeah, unasked, if you will. So, interesting. Let's see if we can get the. We should have live Oz. Let's pull that up. Yeah, they take a while to close here because they weigh everyone in. And all that. And it doesn't matter though. The the if you go to the 
if you go to the uh, Hong Kong website, you get you can look. I mean, I can see odds for race seven if I want to right now. Yeah, I'm very lazy. I just prefer to yeah. guess. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the nine is uh, is uh, four to one. Really? So talk, yeah. Talk about getting uh, getting chopped. Oh shoot. The the four is all is three and a half to one. Your six yeah. and ten are, are nine and ten to one respectively. So yeah, I was looking at probables. I was like, yeah, that's those are higher than I thought they'd be. Um, I don't know. You know, like I said, the dirt here. Although I said that the dirt was, you know, playing where you can get prices, and I think that was the three favorites that just came in. So, but. Yeah, the six is paying, what is it, $189? Uh, let me see. Oh, wait. Sorry. I'm reading it backwards. Four, six, 151. And 10 is 54 for a buck. Unless I'm just misreading the. Misreading uh, it looks that. like 151 to the 10, 160 to the six. So mm -hmm. I got it for two bucks. So, yeah, that's nice. That's a $2 probable. So hopefully, hopefully, we float the day off race one. So, <laughs> yeah, hey. Let's uh let's get this let's get this going here. Um All right. So you like the 6 and 10. And then like I said, I'm kind of just looking at this pretty with pretty fresh eyes. Hmm. What is up with this for? Karis Teton. It's written it last two times. Feel like he ran well on the dirt. Then they put him back to the turf for some reason. And now they're right back to the dirt. Drawn well. He was drawn well the last dirt try too, though. It looks like he's going to be coming from pretty far back. And like I just don't want any any part of these uh I don't want any part of these um speed horses in this race. I just think that they're gonna expend way too much energy getting uh getting across. Yeah, like you said, speed didn't look all that good. I mean I think that four was just better than those horses and you know. I mean it barely held on. It, I don't think it even did hold on, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, like I said, I thought the nine was interesting, but you know that's a real. What about the seven? The sevens. I mean, well, he won a class five at a heavyweight, but he's another one that's just coming from the absolute clouds. I mean, we're talking. He's coming from dead last. So if you want to I mean, be sitting all the way back in this, yeah, and but. look at the. I mean, it's just funny. You look at at the uh, the 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 notes for those last five starts. They literally all say awkward start. Yeah, every single one. Uh, I mean, he's won two of those five races. Don't get me wrong, but um, gets Matthew Chadwick, uh, which I don't know where where is he on your tier list. Um, How much do you hate him? <laughs> he's probably he's probably taking the place of Brandon Abdullah, who, as soon as I criticized, uh, you know, started running lights out and is now racing in Dubai, <laughs> so or going to yeah. be going to Dubai for, for uh, what should we call it? Uh, Blake yeah. on the horse. Aquatic but. Nuke likes the five here, um, and, and he's he says it looks solid. Most of the field comes in okay form. Could run good off the barrier layoff with Purton. Um, I will say what, what I do, do like about the five is he's a lightly raced horse here. Um, he's only got four starts here in Hong Kong. I haven't looked to see if he's got overseas races, but, um, you know, uh, he's kind of a new face and, and they're, they're trying to figure out what, what they want to do, uh, with this horse. Uh, and I mean, you know, Zach's, Zach's bread is definitely buttered on the turf. Um, but. I mean, 
the man wins at 20%. So, um, what do you do? You have splits for for dirt and versus turf on him. I don't. I could pull it, but I'm I'm lazy. I think so. uh, I think you can pull it up pretty easy. But yeah, they I'll might have it. Up. I don't. I mean, I I one thing to say about you know just that five or in general, right? Nothing specific about the horse, but race five, like start number five in Hong Kong is a, around when these horses tend to jump. Um, you know whether they find something or whether that's because eventually, right, like if they haven't won so far, they're going to hit like a low enough weight and just kind of regress to the right mean. Um, race five is anecdotally around where you would expect that kind of move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that five's primed, right? This is the fifth race. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't mind it. I, I think in a field where you got a lot of questions, that's that's probably a decent play. Luke Ferreris is the highest uh, win rate jock on the all weather matt how does that make you feel uh confused because i probably have tossed him on 15 percent on the all weather Abdullah, 14 percent number two he's i mean he's probably about that on turf right now though i mean he's yeah. been on, he's been on fire the past month um like I said, basically as soon as I said he was a shitty jockey, yeah, he Mc started running lights out. So. Yeah, McDonald is is actually technically number one, but he's kind of on a part time basis here. He's twenty three percent on a small sample size, but oh, all um, dirt's a small sample size. So yeah, yeah. they run typically. They have a couple like all dirt days. Um, I don't know when the next one of those is coming up. Hopefully not too soon, but yeah, like, but yeah, I mean, like you see the fall off. Zach is eleven percent uh, in thirty seven rides. Uh, he is on the turf, 22%. Uh, you know who, like I said, Joe Marrera used to really clean up on the all weather. Like he would be, he would win like 30% of the races. Uh, and that's like what kept him in the hunt all the time for the, the, the riding title. Um, but like it's, it's basically Zach, Hugh Bowman and everybody else. Um, uh, yeah. Cause what I'm guessing Teton's yeah, Teton's at 11%. Yo, is that eleven percent? Bentley, eleven percent. That's on the turf, right? Yeah. yeah. Shot tin turf. I mean they split yeah. it out by uh but overall Zach's at nineteen percent. So Yeah, I think he's I think at a jockey title he's ahead by like twenty four, twenty five races at this point. So Yeah, I mean he shouldn't lose. No, he, I don't think it's possible for him to lose. He wins about a hundred and something races a year, so um but hey, let's see. Let's uh, let's click around a little bit on the website just because now I'm curious about this. Now I'm curious about this five uh, that he mentioned it. Form records. No, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, local overseas. Oh, I never re I never know if I can find this stupid. What are you looking for? I'm trying to find if he's got any overseas races. But uh, uh, let me see if I can pull it. Barrier trial. I know it's also on the PPs if you look, but you got to scroll. Yeah, I don't see it. DRF doesn't go back that far. But yeah, yeah no, I, mean, I mean, maybe he doesn't then. Yeah. I mean, uh, horse is four, right? I mean, you'd, for all intents and purposes, you'd expect it to move forward, right? So yep. I, I like it. I, I, I might toss it in a Quadella with the, with the six and the 10 here, to be honest with you. So yeah, what are we, uh, what are we getting odds wise here? Seven to one. So not bad. Yeah. Again, these dirt races tend to be super flat, right? Like you won't see heavy price favorites. Hmm. Oh, good opportunity. I mean, this. I, regardless, I think this three next race is going to be absolutely smashed. So, you know, not really a great opportunity to play into a double here. But so. Oh yeah, he's uh. What is he? Eight to five. 
something like that. Yeah. yeah. He's eight to five. Second choice is five and a half to one. Hmm. Yeah, I, you know, this was this was I thought I thought this was a tough one. I had nothing really nothing really stuck out to me. I mean, but the five is still it's another one that last time out came from pretty far out of it. I think I might like your six the best. Oh, that's not good. No, it's not. I'm gonna cancel. <laughs> Although you know, I mean, the eight high rise power. There's at least dirt pedigree in there, right? You got big brown on the bottom. So, I mean, you at least see an Amer American dirt uh, American dirt pedigree in there a little bit. Uh, I mean, New York bred dirt pedigree, but uh, yeah. dirt pedigree yeah, nonetheless. That, how how similar is uh, Shotin's dirt to Aqueduct? Uh, you know, yeah, that's what we got to... Although... Uh, What's what's Big Brown's probably most successful horse of the last like five years? It was a turf horse, wasn't it? I, I don't even know. I'm bad so, at that stuff. I'm, not, I'm remembering that. Yeah, stuff. synthetic, synthetic, and turf horse. At least I think. You 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 don't know who I'm talking about? No, I don't know. Who you're talking Some about. like it, Hot Brown. I okay, yeah. See, it's funny. I always think of that as like that, you know, that turf horse that just wired those races at Saratoga. <laughs> that, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah, but Get I mean, he that. had multiple years where he won 500K. I mean, that's pretty. Yeah, because you'd put size up on it and he'd run 2550 on the inner and he'd just run it like it was a merry go round. And all of a sudden that horse is great. Yeah. No, I, I hated that horse. But. <laughs> but, yeah. What about the 11? Did you give the 11 a look at all? Did I give the eleven a look? I saw it's Eddie and stop. No, um, <laughs> I like that the the trials look good. You know, um, you I, know, just I don't thought... know it. It might have it might have dirt speed to be honest with you, right? It, like I said, I don't know if that's any is good at sending, but if you look at the dirt trials, it's you know it's getting the lead in those. Um, you saw with that seven last race how much faith you should put in trials. So, well, I'm just saying, like, I, I'm looking at the running lines for this 11 Speedy Fortune, and I'm seeing a horse that, that, you know, I mean, has shown speed, but I don't know. I think this horse can press. I think this horse can, can sit just off. Uh, I mean, he couldn't win with Zach aboard, and that kind of maybe worries me a little bit, but, um, you know, it looks like, you know, John Size is trying something different trying to put this one on dirt um but yeah i think i if anything i tossed it because i was looking at the turf form and those thousand yard races or thousand meter races rather where it's it's drawn ideally right it's sitting on the outer rail um you know and it's it's closing off a little bit there so i think to me it was like okay weight's moving up yeah it's it's probably in the right spot and doing the wrong things so i don't know you know i it's an open race for sure um, I'm, I'm fading, but maybe, you know, you said you didn't want any horses on the lead though. And I think that horse, if anything, right. The argument for it is it's going to send and wire mm, yeah. and I just don't see it this race. So. Yeah. Cause like, I am looking for someone to press. That's why I keep on looking at your six, you know, but I don't, I also don't want to mush you, you know, I mean, we had that, we had that, that lingua taco moment there and like, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin that, you know? No one's, no one's in my head more than myself. Don't, don't <laughs> worry about that. <laughs> uh, Molly, uh, mentioning, uh, DeMello was an awesome jockey in South Africa. Uh, he's, uh, new this year or has he been here for a bit now? I forget. I think he, I don't know if he's new this year, but, uh. It is more recent, but yeah. I mean, you also forget, right? I mean, these jockeys are, are can be great locally, and they come here, and it's it's deep end of the pool, and and it's hard, right? I mean, some of the stuff where I think you were talking about getting mounts here is an interesting. Um, it's an interesting process, right? I don't know if they, I don't even think they have jockey agents. You almost have to like negotiate like mount to mount, right? 
um it's a it's a much different piece and i and honestly i think like you know take brendan abdullah as a, as a great example of that yes he's riding incredible right now um but also i think because he's riding well he's getting better mounts and when you get better mounts right it tends to accelerate really quick so that's that's half of it right it's just their trust in you and you see these jockeys i mean you wonder how a jockey can be sitting at zero percent that's part of the reason why um you know that even if Tabella is a really good jockey overseas, it's hard. You can come here and get nothing. And I guess that works domestically too, right? Like you see people that, you know, try to come to Saratoga and then just because of the Ortiz brothers and, you know, whoever else is up there and, you know, sitting in Naira, riding the seventh best horse in every single race isn't going to look good for you, no matter how good a jockey you are, right? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's tough. Um, it, it's... I don't envy them trying to make inroads. But. Yeah. All right. I uh, I made an executive decision. I'm going with the 11 here. God damn it, Paul. Paul's also going with the 11. I literally just turned. I'm like clicking over, like making my bets, to, uh, op, just to pop open the uh, the feed, and uh, and he's on there. But uh, I like the 11, and I'm using them with the six and the quinella. Uh, I didn't see the paddock pick. What was the paddock pick? I forget uh, her I name. Know. What's the lady's name? Oh God, it's too late for me to remember that. But I know I uh, I had to uh, go to a uh, a trusted uh, microbrew in uh, Michelob Ultra to kind of uh, lighten lighten the load a little bit. I might I might go grab a refill. I'll I'll be right back for this. All one, right. So. All right, now that he's gone. No. Yeah, Aquatic mentioning apprentices in Hong Kong don't get top mounts, that's for sure. Yeah. No, that's that's definitely a uh, tough business, man. Um and and you get you get people uh who really really like the the weight break and I feel like they'll get um they'll get calls just based off the weight break. Um you know, because because weight's a big thing over there. So, uh, but you know, if you if you're not winning, even with that weight break, you know, the, the call stop pretty quickly. Um, but you do, like I said, you do get imports, right? Like um, like Hugh Bowman, uh, he uh, he came over and, and he's been having a pretty good. Uh, Jenny, Jenny's her name. It's Jenny, Matt, Jenny. There it is. Yeah. yeah. She likes the ten, the eleven, the three, and the four. Of course, she's on. She's on mine. Uh, yeah, that's usually what I watch. So she's actually really good at. Uh, she's actually really good at her job. So yeah, you know, it's funny because I always. Uh, so Matthew DeSantis, I, I did a interview with him like like three years ago at this point, like when he was first starting out, and he'd asked me, he's like, "Well, what like what's your like number one tip for someone like brand new going to the track, like and and they want to bet on the horses, and." I was always like, like I kind of like took it a different way. I'm like, look, like I can kind of tell you how to read a form, like, and you know, make some educated guesses. I'm like, but like, if you're literally at the track and have no clue what you're doing, and like, I'm like, just go look at the horses. Go look at the horses, and like, the one that looks the best, just bet that. Like, I mean, oftentimes it's the most expensive horses that look the best, anyways. Like. But I, I don't know. I feel like, you know, one of my uh, I, I, I've told the story a bunch of times at um, I'm not someone who knows horse flesh like I, I confirmation and all that stuff. I, I don't know shit about it, but I was at uh, I was at the Breeders' Cup and I had a paddock pass for the uh, the turf, the, the juvenile turf and a horse walked past me. And I was like, holy shit, that is a horse. Like, I, I couldn't put it into words, but the way that the horse presented itself, the way it just walked past, I'm like, I got to bet that horse. Uh, and it was that Aiden O'Brien horse, the one horse in that race. Uh, this was not last year, but the year before. Um, and the name escapes me right now, but horse wins uh, at a pretty decent price. I think it was like seven to one or something. He was like fourth or fifth choice. Um, and saved my day. That. 
and betting the people's horse at my table at Turf Paradise uh, on Friday. Uh, you were at Turf Paradise? No, I was not at Turf Paradise. I was at, oh. I was at a table in this fancy area in the Breeders' Cup, and we're yelling at a tablet with Turf Paradise up, um, and they're off. You, you all blame me for betting uh, Aqueduct or... Uh... On you know Breeders' Cup days, betting Turf Paradise. Jeez. All right, it looks like the two. Is it the two and the three on the lead? Yeah. I thought that eleven would send. I don't even know where it's at. Let's shuffle back. I have no idea. I don't like it though. Well, you wanted a closer. It's gonna have to do it. Well, I oh is he on the rail there? Is he in the pink? Uh yeah. It looked like he got pulled back to to navigate that, but. I don't know. And that's a little further back than I wanted. I'll tell you, I like where your six is at. I like where my ten's at, personally. But come on, close down. Go. Cool. Is this three gonna hang on? Get up. Get up with this ten. Come on. I'm not even going to get a uh, uh, chalk. Four. Man. I mean, it made, made all the sense in the world. but Yeah, it did. Do I get a consolation? I don't even know. Probably not. Yeah. I don't... Uh, did it pass the three? Can't tell. I thought it did. Uh, yeah, it did. All right, look at me. I'll make my money back. Man. Yeah, there you go. See, look at that. That's why we play doubles. Of... Mm -hmm. To make your money back? Yeah, that's why you play doubles. Uh, yeah. yeah, next thing you know, you're going to advocate for racing roulette all over again. Yeah, you should play. They should pay all three places. You know? What the that's... hell, man? So, yeah, three. So, the 12, the 12 didn't go at all, huh? That was a screwy, screwy pace scenario. I don't know. How. I, I'm curious how accurate was the speed pro on that? Um watch the replay because what was it? Two three? Yeah. It didn't have a two on the lead, I know that. It had the it had the two on drawn inside of the three and the twelve on the lead, but the twelve didn't go. Yeah. So I guess the I guess two the, the two I makes guess the sense. Three had to had to send, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty close. It was just the 12 not being in there. And then, yeah, the 12 not being there. And then it takes the worst trip in all of horse racing, three wide, no cover, the entire way around. Oh, goodness gracious. Is that your guy? Who was Ham Rodney? No, it's Hamlin. It's Hamlin. Um, oddly enough, D4 did not go off favor. The nine did. Four went off that's at five crazy to one. To me. I mean, that that's what I was saying though. Like, if you're taking a horse at sixty six to one and then betting it at four to one, four to one, like that's a that's a pass from me. Florida crap shooter, can you guys explain how to cap these races? I have no clue. Which is funny because I, that's actually how we kind of started uh, a little bit of it, but um, we got the uh, we got the Hong Kong website up here, and you can just download the free form, which looks like this. It looks pretty similar to the the American form. There's no speed figures, but if you uh, if you like seeing numbers and you like watching the numbers go up, uh, there is. Speed Pro, which is also on the Hong Kong website. I always just have to search for Speed Pro HKJC, and it gives me this site. You got some really cool information on here. You know, you can get. It looks it looks a little old school, but you get more detailed notes. You get energy figures. You get splits and stuff like that. You get the. Uh, you get the. Speed map, that's in the PPS, and kind of try and figure out what's going on. Obviously the four, yeah, the four, uh, four set off. I mean, I had the right idea. I didn't want someone. I didn't want someone on the pace there, but unfortunately, uh, yeah, 
the 11, the 11 was just too far back. Um, and didn't really make up much ground after that either. So I don't know if you want to be on the rail on that. Um, it's, it's not a place to be, but uh, I'm curious to see what your payout is here. I ten dollars maybe. Hey, ten dollars is ten dollars, man. Yeah, not when I dumped a bunch of money into that seven that didn't run a step first race. Yeah, but that's okay. I'm joining you. Uh, strength in numbers, by the way. I went for a, a micro course light. So there, hey, I I'm actually a big fan of Coors Banquet. Mm. I think Coors Banquet is uh is, is pretty disagree. good. But um, course I mean, course light after one a.m. is my <laughs> is my oh. rule. So it's only twelve thirty here. Um, yeah, Michelob Ultra. I mean, like it's just. I don't know. Sometimes, like I just like don't want to think, and usually, like if that's the case, I'll just grab a um, I'll grab a Modelo or something. But um, and we've talked about this. We've talked about the uh, the the bell curve, right? Where Modelo's on both sides. Yeah, I did. Uh, I went out for you know fake cheap Tex Mex tonight with the uh, with the kids, which was actually very good. But yeah, I, I had a couple. Uh, Modelo Negras before uh, before coming, so nothing wrong with that, man. They're good, right? I was like, I haven't had it in a long time because we were, you know, with COVID and we're going out, and it's just not something I'll buy. But yeah, yeah, no, I was like, these are, you know, it's, it's quality. Nothing, you know, nothing pairs better with tacos than, than that. So I, I'm just, a, I'm a big fan of dark lagers like that. Like the, I mean, obviously, um, it's if I remember correctly, it's a Vienna lager is technically the style of Modelo Negra. But the, I mean, I think the, the best example that, that people frequently see is the Oktoberfest beers, Marzins and Fest beers. Um, and I mean, I'll be honest with you, I keep Oktoberfest beers like year round because <laughs> I really yeah. like them. So, um, and it's funny because, like, I think technically the ale equivalent is like a brown ale. But I just don't. I mean, I just don't get the same character whatsoever. So I don't know. I got to figure that out at some point because obviously ales are just way easier to brew at home when you don't have temperature control. But I don't know. I I, I have kits laying around that I've yet to make, um, and I don't think they're going to get made, unfortunately, because I think they they might have gone bad. What I have a extract kit that's probably like three years old. What are the chances that the extract is still good? The extract itself might be a little sweaty, but that would be okay. Uh, the yeast that was in there is, is definitely terrible. Please don't use that. It's in the fridge. It's fine. You, you cannot use three-year-old yeast, dude. If, and, and the hops? If you, if you want it, the hops are going to be not as hoppy as they were either. Those are going to degrade over time. But if you're going to do the yeast like that, make a starter. You know, like I mean, uh, I use dry yeast, like yeah, but even then, if it's three years old, you gotta, you know, yeah, I'll that. probably, just, I mean, and what's dry yeast cost like three dollars or something? To pack uh, it, like. Yeah, it's we're you know, we're we're in inflation times, probably six mm. or seven, but you know, it's nothing's three dollars anymore. Come on, let's see, you barely play a double for three dollars. What is it? What's on. um, no, what's a uh, is it SAO4? Uh, yep. SAO4 is like the, you know, what? Like the, the classic. Yeah, that and USO5. USO5 is more like the classic, like, ale, you know, American ale yeast, and SO4 is the English one. Yeah. Yep. So. Six bucks from our good friends at Anheuser-Busch, a.k.a. Northern Brewer. And I and Florida Crap Shooters, I appreciate that you like the, you like the, uh, the name. We'll have to get shirts. Um, but yeah, I figure we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get through this last race here, race three, which I know is a little bit, uh, you think this is a little chalky here with, uh, who's your favorite in this race? The, uh, three horse, you think? Uh, yeah, by far, uh, yeah. the three, the three is currently set in a three to five. So, yeah. So pick three starts here. You playing it? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, I know how much you hate like these short price horses, but uh, no, I mean, I uh, my you know me, my fatal flaw is you know 
trying to beat these horses? No, my fatal, well, that's one of my fatal flaws. My other fatal flaw is, you know, having my large confidence bets be $6 and my low confidence bets be $4. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. of course I'm playing it, but yes. No, I, I have this three uh, as a lone A in here. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to talk about it because that's not worth talking about. But the other horse I did like was the four. I, I think the four has a a legitimate shot in here and i don't think anybody else has a legitimate shot in here but um you know obviously the the draw improvement is is there right you're getting a, a much better draw than the last out horses like this that i think have excuses kind of layered on top of each other if you see one excuse fine um the four last race it was wide uh, or checked badly in the straight too, so it didn't uh, close at all. Race before that it was wide. Race before that it was wide again. So you kind of have, I think, some excuses built up for this. And that's really the only scenario I could see anybody beating this three is that this four, you know, can run back to its form from like four races ago because it's just gotten unlucky the past three times. Um, yeah, you know, uh, maybe. Uh, obviously, it lost to that three badly last time too. So who knows? Um, and you would expect a three to move forward. Like usually, you see first out winners; they're going to move up in in class pretty like fast. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to play a small bet on the four and probably play a you know a three four exacta, um, you know, just for for kicks here. But yeah, I, I think that's kind of the way I saw it. The three is likely likely worthy of being this short, and then the four is, you know. Maybe the only other horse that I want a little bit of here. I'm currently trying to talk myself into this nine. It's got the nice draw. It's got the draw. He's on the rail. Where you want Rails to are out. Maybe. And, I never know how uh, this is gonna play. I I do. I will say I I looked decently hard at that nine and. It was against the track last time, right? Like, it's theoretically, you know, it was. It made the lead. It ran fast. That horse, was, that course was not playing forward at all. And we don't know how the turf's playing yet. We haven't seen him run on the turf yet. I don't know. I, I don't mind it. Is it? Speed Pro say it's loose. No, it can't be loose. No, like, no. The, but the other horse, the other horse that, um. The other horse that is drawn in here, the two that they think is going to be on the speed or on the lead, uh, is a little bit further drawn out. Is in the seven post. Um, so I don't know. I, I thought maybe. I mean, the the two though. Last time out, uh, last time at this trip uh, on this track, did win. Wired wire. So I don't know. Yeah, how much? How much weight's it picking up now? Uh the yeah, two back at at one. It's picking up five pounds from that win. Forward. Yeah, it, it it picked up yeah, it picked up six pounds last time. Uh, granted it was drawn bad last time too, so you can't really hold it against it, but eh. You see Bentley uh, and you're out. No, that's not true. I, I I see high weight and you know, contested paces and other All horses right. inside and I <laughs> I throw it. So I'm using three horses to try and beat this three. I, I talked myself into the two, talked myself into the nine. And I think I think the other horse outside of the three that might have the figures that can win in this race is the one. Um, you know, last two times out, ran well, ran second, drawn outside, 11 post both times. It's drawn back inside um, this time. Uh, gets Karis Teat in the board, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, it seems like he prefers the the shot tin, um, shot tin track, or at least the last couple of tries. It seems like moving the shot tin, he's run a little bit better going the, this trip, this distance. So, I don't know. I think it's the horse going the right direction. Uh, gets a gets an improving post. Um, obviously, the the weight uh, might be it might be a bit of a concern, but hey, let's. Uh, Let's try. Let's try and beat this three here. So I'm going to use the the one, two, and nine. But uh, obviously, pick three requires uh, three winners in a row. So who's winning race four? 
I'm going to have you tell me that because I want you to look at the Speed Pro and tell me who you think is going to win race four. Oh, baby, let's go two. <laughs> See, I, I don't even need to. I don't even need to ask. I could. We plan none of this. Just, you know, I, I, I knew you were gonna take that horse. So. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, let's. I mean, let's let's actually look at this. The one's a little interesting because. He's now he's actually drawn well and keeps Zach. But I wonder if he's uh yeah, he's gonna be short. Yeah. Uh he's nine to five currently. Yeah, the two looks like he's just gonna be all kinds of loose. Yeah, I think that one is picking up a lot of weight. Uh how much weight is it picking up? Eleven it's, pounds. Yeah. And granted, I mean, it won from a really bad post last time, so that looks appealing. What about the six? You look, you make the six at all? Um, I know he's coming from Happy Valley, but yeah, I tried to. I always struggle with these horses that are running two turns and then trying to figure out what they want to do at one turn. I thought it's one turn races going back to like last year and like the start of this year weren't great. Now granted that's a stretch cause it's like, okay, how much, how much faith are you going to put in the horse or put in the race where, you know, it had a two and a half month layoff, right? Like that's the only one turn race it had this season. Um, and the other one was in July, you know, that said, I mean, I had that course playing incredibly forward, like during the summer, right when it, first started off in September and fading off of that, I think was enough for me to be like, okay, it's going to try and get out to the lead unless this course is playing incredibly forward. Right. And we'll figure that out this race. Unfortunately, it's kind of where you're at a disadvantage here is we haven't seen the turn yep. yet. Um, you know, if it's not winning on that course, when it had to lead, then I don't really think it's going to hold on in a, in a fair track either going a little bit longer. Right. If it can't hold going 16, How's it going to hold on going 1800? So I was a pass there. Um, the other place I went, and granted, right, I mean, again, we're stretching on how this course is going to be playing. I like the nine um, a fair bit. I think it's improving, right? Like, again, when I pull my own, my own figs, and like I said before, right, I was kind of going off that angle of, fifth up is is the time that a horse is going to move forward yeah. um you know i think that's you know maybe it's primed to to do something and show something here you're going to get a massive price right and um you know when i saw hey if i if i'm laying into the three pretty heavy that first leg i'm probably going to you know need to get a price in the second leg to make this pay anything and that nine was kind of where i went just as a who's going to beat the one or the two in here um so yeah, I, I, the one is probably a B given the amount of weight it's picking up. Picking up eleven pounds is a lot. Um, the two is, you know, like you said, that lone speed, probably an A, and then the nine I think is my other, you know, kind of price play in that. And I'll play a pretty good bet each way on that nine. So yeah, I think and if I remember correctly, I think Aquatic uh, Nuke is talking about race three that the race two three, is, yeah that the two has yep. got some. Uh, some good uh, back class there and some of the, the horses he's been running against. So, yeah, I have, what did I put down here? Oh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm sticking with the two and then I'm taking a Matt, Matt angle here. I'm kind of surprised you didn't go that direction. Going on to the 13. Forever folks. When in doubt, take a low weight with a good draw. And this is a horse that uh, you know didn't draw well last time out. Uh, did do back and didn't do any running. Uh, but hey, you know gets a little gets a change of scenery here with a different jock. Um, does have a race? Uh, I think a race three back that at least kind of fits in here. Um, 
And, you know, he, I mean, he was drawn decently. He wasn't, you know, he was drawn in the middle of the pack. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of cross the line through the last two. Hey, we're, we're drawn pretty good here. Get a jock change. Uh, you know, going to be uh, second lowest weight in this race. So um, I know you don't see it. I, I like betting bad horses. And, and, that, bad and horse. that's, that's, but I don't like betting bad horses. You don't like betting, <laughs> betting horses that bad? Not that well, one. it's all right. The two's gonna win anyways, I'll tip right? Cap when you get that, yeah, it's you know, but the 13 might you know run along, I, and you know, I can't wait till tomorrow morning when you know you wake up and then you're just like, I don't know. I feel like the last couple weeks I've like messaged you, like, what the hell happened last night? Because <laughs> <laughs> It's look if you're gonna be wrong, just be very wrong. Okay? Yeah. It's, then you can't even feel bad. You don't feel bad waking up when like you missed it by a little bit, right? You, or when you missed it by a lot. You feel bad when you missed it by like one, you know, one selection. Or when your horse like, is finished like out the back, you're like, well, yeah. whatever, I fucked up, but so it's fine. Yeah. You know? when, so. when you're off by one selection and it's uh it's Zach Burton picking up a horse coming in from overseas. Hey, that hey, one hurt, that, right? Hey, it still hurts. It's still, it's still. I I still laugh. Me. I laugh because Russ, Russ is like, please tell me you guys combined your picks. I was like, Russ, absolutely not. We did not combine our picks. No, no. <laughs> He's the one who listened. He's the one who should have combined the picks. God, gave it out. Just didn't play. <laughs> uh, all right. So last race here, race five. Um, you know. Upon first look, my eyes kind of went to the 10 beauty missile here. Um, you know, seems to be, uh, seems to kind of be the, the horse on Speed Pro. Um, he's got back races um, that absolutely fit here. Obviously, his, his last race um, was a pretty significant improvement over his last two um, on the cutback. Um, so... I don't know. I thought I thought with the cutback, this was uh you know running back to that distance. I thought that he was uh, he was a bit interesting in here. Um, I don't know though. The one. What do you think? What do you think we're gonna get in this one? Is the one gonna be favored again? Oh, maybe not. Probably. I you know I thought the one and the five were probably the best horses, but I made them bees because they're drawn horribly. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, just ability-wise, I thought those were, um, you know, especially that one. The five, I don't know. The five probably has some class that I'm trying to stretch out and, and see. I'm even trying to remember why I took that five. But, yeah, the, the one for sure. I think it'll take a lot of money. And uh, if it wins, it wins. But it's got to do a lot from the 11 post. So Yeah, I, I, like, the, I like the 10, though. So I'll probably go with the, the one and the 10 in here. Yeah. Uh, the other horse I like, I like the 10 a lot. I made the 10 and a, um, the other horse I liked, and I think the, the horse I posted on Twitter was the four. Um, I thought that two race that race two back, um, from Zach was, was good enough to win this and Grant did right. I mean, now it's moving up in class and you know, you had it last time where, um, it just probably had too much to do. Um, so I don't think it gets that easy lead. Like it did back, you know, two back in class four, but I mean, hey, it's got some excuses, right? And I think, you know, theoretically it could move forward, you know, drawing the 12 post when it won, drawing the 10 post last time. So um, I made that four probably my, my best A here. Four and 10 were A's, but I, I think if I'm winning the horse, it's the four. So yeah, I, I, that's kind of where I went. I went four, 10, and then I used the one reluctantly as a B. All right. I got one, two, nine. With two thirteen, with one ten as my pick three here, just punched it in. There you go. So what am I? I'm like three four one two nine in the second leg, and then one four ten in the third leg. So we shall see. I'm eating some chalk here, but yeah. I mean, I at least I know like if I can just go straight to bed after this go. but uh hey we appreciate you guys uh hanging out in chat talking up uh we figured nobody was going to show up for this so the fact that we have even like six people just crazy enough to still be on right now 
obviously uh, our, our good friend uh, Matthew DeSantis also retweeted it out, and so we got some Twitter views as well. So appreciate you guys uh, sticking with us here. Um, just, you know, we, we were going to record tonight anyways, and we are like, hey, we'll, we'll push it back a little bit, stay on a little bit later. We were going to bet these races anyways. You know, the only difference is Matt can't play last epoch while doing it. I quit. I I rolled a spellblade, and that thing has no, uh, no tankiness whatsoever. So I gave that up. You quit? But I well, I took a pause. Okay, like I I you know I'm a I'm a I, I'm bad at action RPGs, man. Like I I can't min max. So <laughs> it's uh, I I took a hiatus. So I took some hiatus to start uh, actually to start coding some uh, some similar stuff for. Uh, uh, for domestic racing, which is not going well, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I uh, I picked back up Elden Ring, the uh, I... from software uh, from software game, and I will tell you that uh, it's been extremely frustrating. Yeah, I uh, <sighs> I'm bad at those. I'm bad at those Souls games too. I, yeah. You know, I, I thought I was decent at video games, and then I'm like, even back to like Dark Souls two, and and part of that too is like, I, I don't know, you know, stuff like that where I'm like, you know, having children is is harder than video games, but it also makes it so that you don't have time to like run back when you you know die in infrequent or uh, inconvenient spots. I'll put it that way. So maybe Elden Ring fixed that a little bit, where like you could just retry stuff, but like. I think I had a rage quit moment in Dark Souls too, where I like mm. I didn't have a save point within like forty five minutes, and I'm like I can't invest another forty five minutes getting back to where I was after this. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's I think I think it's definitely more more approachable because I I could not do Dark Souls at all, but um, I don't know Elden Ring's kind of kept my uh, it's kept my attention more than I thought it would. Um, obviously, I've still been playing FIFA, uh, but the new MLB game is coming out. Uh, it's coming out here. Okay. Florida's saying we need to do a, a Hong Kong handicapping a forum show. Maybe maybe we need to uh maybe we need to put another video up. Maybe we should I know we've talked about it briefly here. We talked about uh talked about it on, on our podcast, obviously. Uh but maybe maybe we do need to just kind of break out a separate video. Yeah. Um and, and, and go through it a little bit a little yeah, bit uh sure. simpler. Um I'll I'll pontificate over my, you know, wait and draw and just say, you know, bet the horses that are, you know, getting off better draws and losing weight and that'll do you decent. But that's an oversimplification. I'll show you at least how to look at that. And then when yeah. I'm wrong, you know, blame me. So. <laughs> All right. They are walking to the gate here. I have this thing on mute, and uh, do you watch races on mute, or do you actually do you listen to the call? No, I actually like listening to it a lot, and even on replays, like I'll I'll put headphones in to watch it. I I do think, um, you know this this crew is really good yeah. for sure, um, and uh yeah i mean i i like listening to them and and part of that too is i think you know it's hard with the same like you know colored gloss and things like that of just figuring out who's where and who's doing what it helps me identify some of that stuff but yeah florida asking if the if there's an inside track bias and and, and i i think uh i think in general right in turf racing saving ground is a huge is a huge thing. So, um, in this case, though, the rails are out today. So, uh, or at least on, on some of these tracks. Um, so, I, I tend to prefer speed on those days a little bit. Um, I, I do think that this track does get print, uh, gets pronounced biases. Um, so, it, it is good to 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 watch and, and and see how it is. And you know, Matt Matt takes some notes um, on days when the track you know is running one way or the other and and just being able to go back and reference those and be like oh you know the track was forward this day you know this horse is coming back um so it, it 
it's good information to have. But yeah, generally the, the inside drawn horses have a bit of an advantage. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, you don't want to be losing ground just because it's, you know, especially here, it's so competitive, right? It's all the horses are kind of bunched together. And so any little, um, you know, ground loss or anything like that kind of gets magnified here versus, you know, in the U.S. where you just might be so much better than the horses you're running against. You can, you know, get away with it. So. Oh, look at my nine. He loves to run. Might go all the way around here. Let's see how much these horses have to do. Oh, boy. Here comes a big old behemoth on the outside. It's force saving ground on the end. Get up the rail. Yeah, no one's making up any ground, though. Get up with this four. What price we get on that? We got nine to one. We got nine to one when we got around the we got around the short price favorite. Uh man. And we probably should have had the Quinella. But I did not play it. What would that Quinella have paid? Nine one? Sixty two bucks. Or nine I don't know, did the four get up or no? I think the four did got yeah, the four got up. But I had the one and the nine uh as my plays there, so I had one two nine. Oh hey, maybe this thirteen next race. No, I mean probably not. But hey, it looks like speed's speed's good, so um yeah, I, I would definitely fire up, fire up the two next race. I think we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go uh, get a little bit of uh, a little bit of win bet. Yeah, sheets player like the four here. Got a decent place bet on it. I I had a place bet on it, so not that it mattered. Oh, there you without go. one bobbed it. So, but with the seventeen four, to one on that. Yeah, there you go. Make some money back. So, yeah, but yeah. I think we're gonna we're that's gonna do it for us, uh, since it's uh, starting to get get a little bit late even for for us degenerates. Um, and uh, I'm out of beer, so that's that's generally when the night ends. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for checking us out. Obviously on the wrong lead dot com at wrong underscore lead. Obviously, every week we do put out a podcast. You've got to be shot tending me. Uh, you can find it here on YouTube or on your favorite podcast app. Generally, upload it Friday night or Saturday morning for Saturday's races. Um, and, and we look at take a look at the late pick three. Um, but uh, you know, some of the feedback you guys have, you know, we'll we'll go definitely and, and put together some uh, some more videos uh, based on handicapping this, what we're looking at, um, and. Uh, yeah, I mean it's just it's just fun to play. It's you know, uh it's it's fun to sit around late at night and uh you know, bet on bet on horses, have a couple beers, um and uh you know, I don't know. It's 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 a good circuit. So um obviously uh check us out uh at slow and steadied for Matt. I am at Cherry Drank. Have a good weekend, guys.